Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That was a little bit weak. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so you just, you just, y'all, y'all got a habit of that kind of thing. Well, uh, if you don't have that habit, it's better than the habit you got, because you're saying something, you're doing something, and when uh, praise, uh, you're prompted to praise or to give glory to God, do not suppress it. Do not suppress it. Yield to Him. And give him glory and give him praise. Hallelujah. The Lord uh, asked me a question uh, some years ago. Uh, He said, Did you notice what kind of people I chose? Talking about uh, Israel. Uh, What kind of people I chose? And I thought, No. What, 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 Lord? He said, They were expressive souls. That's a phrase, isn't it? Expressive souls. Everybody say, expressive souls. And immediately when he said that, I began to remember, man, if they got upset, they'd rip their clothes, throw dirt in the air. (laughs) Is that right? You could hear them howling around the block. If they had a party, you remember the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He heard the music and the dancing. Long before he got to, when, you, when they can hear the dance in three blocks away, that's serious cutting a rug. Is that right? And if they got mad, oh, buddy, look out. They'd strap on their sword, and somebody's going to die tonight. I mean, it, it was no messing around, no half measures. And you know, God wants that. Didn't he say, uh, I'd rather you were uh, hot or cold, not lukewarm? Right? The eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro throughout the whole earth. What's he looking for? He wants to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect, or a lot of translations say wholehearted. Wholehearted. So uh, no half measures, no half steps, no messing around. If you're going to praise, praise. You're going to say hallelujah. You're going to say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Expressive souls. Hallelujah. When we rebuke the devil, we ain't playing. When we praise God, we ain't playing. When we pray, we ain't playing. When we give, we ain't playing. Is that right? (laughs) Hallelujah. That'd be a good. That'd be a good. uh, A good uh, series. We ain't playing. Wouldn't it? (laughs) Turn with me, please, in the scripture to Matthew chapter uh, six. How blessed we are. How blessed we are to be in this place, in this great meeting. Oh, how blessed we are to be able to be here, have the finances to be here, health to be here. We're blessed. We're blessed. I tell tell our folks at the church, I said, you know, we're so blessed, the blessed people call us blessed. Is that right? (laughs) Is that you too? (laughs) Um, Matthew 6, please. And believe with me for utterance, please. Utterance is greatly affected by the hearer, as you know. So let's just agree together. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree together as touching this thing, asking you for specific utterance for this session right now, asking for ears that can hear it, eyes that can see it, 
a heart and mind that can discern and understand it, asking for answers, asking for direction, asking for a supply of the Spirit, impartations and revelation of truth that makes free, bringing us up to the next level, to the next place. And we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the praise, and we won't be just hearers only, nor forgetful hearers, but by your grace we purpose to be doers of the Word, and we know when we do and as we do, we will be blessed because you are ever faithful to watch over your Word and perform it in the lives of those who do it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Somebody say, I'm a doer. 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 Of the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, man, y'all are ready. I can tell y'all. Y'all are ready. <laughs> Fella can't preach in this environment. <laughs> the thing is, I sought the Lord about my part in this great meeting. I was impressed with a very simple truth and yet something that has profoundly impacted and changed Phyllis and my life and our ministry and churches. Back, uh, I guess we were probably five years into ministry. This has been decades ago now. Uh, we, Phyllis and I, my wife and I, came from humble backgrounds financially and materially. And uh, we had never had any money to speak of. You know, survive, get by, okay. But uh, finding out about that God's a God of abundance and that he would bless you and finding out about tithing not just as a ritual but doing it in faith and sowing seed in faith and releasing, agreeing together and believing for things like a car or a house or clothes or uh, we'd been knowing that for maybe five or six years and we'd begun to do some of those things and uh, man, we had an increase of money begin to come into our lives. But we also, not long after that, begin to have, you know, I don't care how much you have coming in, if you got more going out, <laughs> then you got, even if you got a lot coming in, and not that it was a lot, but uh, you still got an issue. Uh, being blessed is having surplus. Surplusage <laughs> is a word you want to lay hold of. <laughs> and it is God's will that we live in abundance, which is not just enough, it's more than enough. Is God the God of more than enough? And yet, we were not experiencing more than enough. We were experiencing less than enough. <laughs> and we're both saved. We're both tongue talkers. We're, uh, in fact, I, you know, we're, I, we're in the ministry. I've, at this time, at this point, five or six years in, I've been to Bible school. And, and I, uh, you know, some of the best faith teaching around. And, and, and I know some of these things. But year after year, we're still coming up short. We got behind on our taxes, we got behind on this, we got behind on that. And if you were just barely making it, once you get behind, now you got to maintain plus catch it up. I, anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, we, we felt like we're half a nostril above water. <laughs> just, just a little bit more, you going under. And this went on for two or three years. And uh, I, I came in one day, I'm in, I'm in the ministry. I came in one day and nobody was at home except me and, and, I, and I just fell across the bed and cried out to the Lord. You know the Bible said if you cry out to him with your whole heart, he'll hear you, he'll answer you. I just cried out to him with my whole being. I said, God, I know this is not your will. I know the way we're living 
And this struggle and always coming short, coming short, coming short. I, I don't know much, but I know enough about your word and enough about you to know this is not you. You're not doing this to us. This is not you. And this is not your will. Lord, help me. You know, thank God. I, I, I know we know a little bit more than we used to, but apparently uh, we need to make some changes. Whatever we need to see, please show me. Anybody that you could connect us with ministry-wise that, that would help us and bring these things into our life, uh, this direction, this wisdom, this understanding, I'm asking for it. And I, and I was as sincere as I knew how to be. I, I, I wept while I prayed. You know, you get tired of being broke. Is that right? Especially once you've found out it's not God's will. Right? <laughs> you get tired not being able to do some simple things that you ought to be able to do. Not being able to give on the way that you want to give. Is that right? Not being able. I mean, that's uh, enough sickness in your life is like being in prison. Bondage. And enough poverty in your life is like being in prison. It's like being in bondage. You're restricted. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't go there. Can't be a part of this. Can't give into this to, to, like you want to. So I cried out earnestly. And looking back now, I didn't, I didn't get the answers laying on the bed there that day. And I didn't understand the answer the next day or the next. Excuse me. I shouldn't say that. He gave me something immediately. I didn't see it all. I uh, don't see it all yet, but enough to change the thing. Um, but I, looking back now, I can see right there is where our life started changing. He heard our prayer. And, and, and looking over the next five years, it seemed like every day he was saying something to me about abundance. About how his things work, about sowing and reaping, and about faith and living by faith. But the first thing he took me to was Matthew 6. He took me to this passage. And I knew it was him answering my, uh, my prayer. Matthew 6, are you there? Matthew 6 and about verse 24 He said, no man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Sit out loud, everybody. No man, no man. Can, serve two masters. can serve two masters. Can't do it. What's going to happen is you're going to get frustrated with the pull of both of them. And you're going to have to pick one and ignore the other. You can't do it. You can try it, but you can't do it. You're going to wind up with one. And uh, verse 25, therefore I say to you. Now, the, that means these thoughts are connected. You can't serve two masters. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the meat life more than food, the body is more than clothes. What's that got to do with can't serve two masters? It's the heart of it. It's the core of it. Now keep reading with me. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Now there, there is a, a resurgence of a religion I call green religion. And it's, it's hinged on Mother Earth. It's not new. It's been around for thousands of years. Worship of the creation more than the creator. It's in Romans 1. But there's a lot of people confused about this. And, uh, you know, the emphasis being 
on uh, the planet and our mother and taking care of our mother. The earth is not our mother. No, sir, no, ma'am. And um, there's no need in seeing how quickly we can mess this place up. I'm not talking about that. Uh, but ultimately, the earth cannot and will not be saved. So, Mr., so you believe in global warming. I go beyond that. I believe in global melting. <laughs> and the only solution is a new heavens and a new earth. And this idea that we need to be willing to sacrifice some human beings to save the planet is completely godless yes. and from the pit. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. No, no. <laughs> no charge for that. <laughs> but why did I say that? The fowls of the air. Does God see you and a blackbird of equal value? No. Hmm? What about you and a tiger? No. The same. No, you are of, you're better than them. Am I reading the scripture or not? Verse 26, are you not better than them? You're worth more than them. Jesus said so. Okay. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? Why take thought for the ra your raiment, your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, he must have been a snappy dresser. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, all this passage is telling us, don't try to serve two masters. And these, these following verses, don't worry and fret and fear about your provision. Should we take the Lord at his word yes. and do what he tells If he says, don't worry about your provision, is it possible for us not to worry yes. about our provision? Yes. Then it's a choice. It's a choice. Not to say you, might, you, you, you can't be tempted to fret about it, but when the temptation to fret comes, you got to make the right decision Amen. and say no. Amen. No. God feeds the birds, and he feeds me. Is that right? Birds are eaten all over this planet by the billions, and I'm going to eat too. Is that right? No matter what happens to the economy, I'm going to eat. My kids are going to eat. My grandkids are going to eat. My church is going to eat. We're going to eat. And if we're willing and obedient, we're going to eat good. We're going to eat the good of the land. And if I'm fretting about it, fearing about it, worrying about it, it means I don't believe this. My faith is lacking in my provider, in the creator, in his, how big he is and how good he is. Is he big enough? to take care of us in yeah. any situation. Yeah. Is he good enough? Yeah. Then our worrying days should be over. over. Come on, somebody say, I just don't worry about it. I just don't. He said, if God uh, clothes the hills the, with the lilies and with the, the grass of the field, Aren't you, aren't you worth more? He's going to clothe you. Is there grass on hills all over this planet? Are there flowers and plants all over the place? Then I'm going to wear good. I'm going to be dressed. 
I said, I'm going to be dressed. My kids are going to be dressed. My grandkids are going to be dressed. My church is going to be dressed. We're going to be dressed. And we're going to be dressed well, no matter what's going on. Come on, somebody say, I don't, I don't even worry about it. Keep reading. Verse 31, therefore, do what? Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Can you hear fear in that? Can you hear worry in that? Anxiety, frustration. What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? How are we going to do that? Where are we going to get that? How's the kids going to be able to go to college? How, how are we going to be, if they do this with the economy, if they do that over at the, at the, the company, at the factory, how are we going to do this? How are we going to make that? We are not supposed to talk like that. That's right. Amen. Jesus said, don't talk like that. Amen. Don't take thought like that. And don't speak like that. Should we take him seriously, saints? Should we take him seriously? What if this and what if that? Don't talk like that. Anytime a fear comes, something challenging arises in your life, that's an opportunity to speak faith over it and to speak victory over it. Is that right? What are we going to do? Will we, will, we, will we have enough to do that? Yes. I know somebody asked, asked me that some years ago. Boy, it just popped up in my spirit. Will we have enough to do that? They said, I said, no. We'll have more than enough. Yes. We will have more than enough to do that. Amen. We'll have enough to do that Amen. and then some. Amen. Oh, somebody needs to say it. We'll, we'll have enough Amen. to do it Amen. and then some. Surplusage. Surplusage. Living in some excess. <laughs> People say, oh, we don't, we don't want to get into excess. I do. I do. Don't want to get into excess. What do you mean by that? If you're talking about a good thing, there's no such thing as too much. Amen. Anybody ever heard of being too excessively saved? <laughs> too excessively healed? No, you can't be too excessively blessed either. You don't want to get into error, but excess is God's will. He not only fills your cup, he runs it over. That's excess. Excess. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and surplusage, excess, running over, running over, running over. You believe this? You believe this? Well, I did too. and was still coming up short. I'm a preacher. I preached some of this. Even back then, I was preaching some of this. And I'm still coming up short. Verse 31, take no thought. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Saying, what should we eat? What should we drink? Wherewithal should we be clothed? You know, uh, we just read this, the church, uh, I guess it was yesterday, about uh, when the Lord told uh, Moses to tell the people, get ready, I'm going to feed you meat for a month mm -hmm. out in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. And Moses, didn't, he didn't tell them right away. He said, Lord, we're going to kill every cow we got. <laughs> we're going to kill every sheep we got. It, he said, it, it take all the fish out of the sea. No, it wouldn't. Moses don't know how big the sea is, does he? He's been hanging around with this unbelieving bunch too much, yeah. and it's rubbed off on him, and he's having yeah. a moment. Yes. 
You know what the Lord told him? He said, is the Lord's hand waxed short? You'll see. Hallelujah. The Lord said, you'll see. Glory to God. The enemy is continually trying, he's the God of this world, and perpetuate darkness in the mentality of a lack and that everything is running out and everything is so scarce and not enough. Not enough of this, not enough of that. And if they get that, then there won't be any left for you. Lies, lies, lies. There's more than enough resources on this planet for every one of us to be a billionaire. It's the truth. But it's a lie. The enemy tries to convince people everything's running out, everything's short. If you don't believe in God and you're just looking at how far you can see, which is not out past your backyard. But if God is your God and if he's the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in them and the galaxy and the other billion galaxies. Somebody was talking about the scope of the universe recently. They said, if our sun, which dwarfs our, our planet, if our sun was a period, a dot on an eye, then the galaxy we're in would be the size of the continental United States with this tiny period in the middle somewhere that you can't even see. And that's just one galaxy. Apparently, there's billions of galax galaxies, not planets, not stars, galaxies. That, that's just what we can see. And every time we get a new telescope, we go, wow, didn't know that was out there. <laughs> and we talk about the God that created that. Can't get you lunch money for your kids. <laughs> oh, the God, the God that created that. Can't help you, help you get a little little brick and, and wood house? A little plastic and rubber car? Come on. <laughs> if God is God and he's who the Bible says he is, there is no shortage in him. There is no lack in him. And I'm in him. And he's in me. Come on, somebody say, there's no lack. There's, there's no lack in him. No lack in him. He said, is my hand waxed short? I mean, you know, God will tell funnies sometimes, joke. <laughs> At one point in the prophets, he said, um, I know not of any other God. Well, God, aren't you omniscient? Yeah. What does that mean? There ain't none. <laughs> Is my hand, what's the Lord saying? Uh, am I experiencing some shortage I didn't know about? I mean, I can't do this? Is my hand wax short? There is no shortage in him. And yet, are Christians experiencing shortage? Oh, yeah, all over the place. I have, you may have. And the Lord brought me to this verse right here. I mean, the very next day or two after I prayed that prayer, Matthew 6, 33. Anybody got this one marked? Yeah. Let's read verse, verse 32 again. He's, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, 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 he started off by saying, you can't serve two masters. After all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Uh, it's something how that people can get in a situation where they're in need and they run desperately to God to tell him, God, I just found out. <laughs> I need $1,000 right now. I need $10,000 by the end of the month. God, I just found out. And I guess they're thinking in their mind that, that the Father on the throne is going, what? When did this come up? Michael? Gabriel? What's going on here? 
What's the reality? He knows that you have need of these things. He knew it before you found out. And already had the provision in place for the need you did not yet know. Because when, so when you found out about it, you should immediately think, this ain't no surprise to God. There's no surprise to him. He knew this was coming. And he's already got to, he doesn't have to find the provision. He's already got it. He's already got it situated. And he choreographs me to it, it to me. All I have to do is not worry. Is that right? Trust him. Do what he said. Look at that next verse. But, why would you start that off with but? <laughs> well, other folks are seeking all these things. But you, but seek ye, but you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. And he said it again, take therefore no thought for the morrow. How many times did he tell us, don't worry now, don't worry. Did he say try not to? No, no he just said don't do it. Don't fret, don't worry. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. Deal with today. Amen. Right? Don't borrow on tomorrow's problems Amen. and be fretting and frustrated about them. You ain't there yet. Right? Deal with today. And guess who's going to be there tomorrow? God's going to be right there tomorrow. Just like he helped you through yesterday. He's going to help you through today. And when you get there, he'll be there too. And he always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. The Lord took me to this uh, passage. Matthew 6, I knew it. I had preached on it. And this is what he said to me. I don't mean I heard a voice outside, but inside me very distinctly. And looking back now, I can see... It was the breakthrough in Phyllis's in my life. It was the turnaround point where things began to get better and we came into a different way of living. He said to me, son, you are like many of my people. You know this verse, but you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know this verse. He said, you're like many of my people. You know this verse, Matthew 6, 33, but you're not doing it. Not doing what? Read it out loud, everybody. What does it say? Seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God is all that God reigns over. The kingdom of God is God's house. The kingdom of God is God's mission, his kingdom mission, his kingdom work, his things and what he's doing in the earth first. Before what? First before what? Before my things. Before my food. My he mentioned three things. My food, my drink, my clothes. He said to me, son, you are like many of my people. You know this verse. And I did. I had preached on it. But you're not doing it. You're not practicing it. I thought, Lord, I know you're right. If you say it, it's right. Help me. Help me. Just like that, I began to see scenarios. He began to bring scenarios to my mind. I'm not seeing these things outwardly, but to my mind, he kept bringing me people, his people. They get paid. And the first thing they think about 
is I got I to gotta pay my rent. I got to make my house payment. The kids need some things. We got to pay some insurance. Got to get the groceries. Need some new shoes. Car needs some new tires. And so they begin to go down that path. And then a day or two later, they're in church. And it's time to give. And they just don't have it. And they wish they did. They wish they did. But they just don't. Because it's already gone. And so they're praying, Lord, help me. Lord, give us more. And the truth is, they've already violated the first principle of prosperity. Amen. Come on, are y'all with me now? Yes. They're putting themselves first, their kids first, even desires and hobbies, and then thinking about doing things for the kingdom as an afterthought when somebody brought it to their attention in a service or a meeting and then check to see what I have left. That is not doing Matthew 6.33. Come on, can you see that? Giving as an afterthought, if you can, as you can. See, People on this planet, including believers, are living, trying to live, like we're going to do this forever. And, you know, Jesus talked about the, the situation where the, uh, the, the, the Lord was having the great supper, and he called the, the people to, invited them to the feast, and one by one, they begin to make excuse, right? And they said, a man, you know, I'd like to, but I got this thing at work. I just, I just got some new equipment, and they're installing it, and we, we got to stay on top of this and get this. Sorry, can't come this time. Uh, I'd like to come, but, man, I just got married, you know, so I can't come. And excuse after excuse. Well, the problem with that is, Next time it comes up, you know what the enemy is going to provide you with? Another similar situation. Is that right? Similar situation. Come on now. How many opportunities did you have not to come to this meeting? Huh? How many reasons? In, in the eyes of many, very legitimate reasons. I got this going. I need to check on this. I need to do this. If you're open to it, the enemy will provide you with an endless list. Hmm? Reasons not to go to church, reason not to serve in the church, reason not to give. Come on. I mean, over and over and over again. And in so doing, one violates the first principle of prosperity. And therefore, you don't qualify. You don't qualify. Tell me the verse again. A lot of you know it. You could quote it. What does it say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, his righteousness, righteousness is an old English word, his rightness. He's right about everything. Is that right? The way he does everything he does is right. Everything he does, the way he does it, right, right, right. How many think we need to find out what he wants done and how he wants it done? Is it, and that's going to be the right thing to do at the right time and the right way to do it. Seek first the kingdom of God, his business, his things, his house, his mission what he's ruling over and doing. And what he says is right to do in the right way to do it. And tell me what's going to happen. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say would happen when you do that? And all these things, all what things? He's talking about natural 
material things. Is that right? Provision, food, clothes, housing would be in there. Every natural thing you need to live this life and to follow him and serve him. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? All. Are you looking at it? How much of it? All these things, what? Shall be added to you. Now, this is not you adding them to yourself. This is him adding them to you while you're seeking his business. It is a completely different way of living than the ungodly world is living. Completely. And sadly, a very different way of living than most Christians are living. This is, this is walking by faith, not by sight. Uh, hold your place there and listen to uh, Psalm 34. Or you can just, no, just, just stay where you are. You can, you can listen to Psalm 34 if you're not there. I'll just read it to you. A lot of you are familiar with it anyway. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That includes all the fears of running out. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trust in him. Oh, fear the Lord, verse 9, you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Say it out loud. There is no want to them that fear him. The very next verse said, the, the young lions, that's the strongest of the strong, do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, are you awake? Are these verses true or not? They're very true. How, how many would say these verses are absolutely yes. true? Yes. What Jesus said? Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. If you seek the Lord, you will not want any good thing. Amen. True or not? True or not? True. Very true. Well, what if all these things are not being added to you? What if you are lacking and wanting in good things that you need? <laughs> we need to come face to face with it. Is that right? If the Lord's word is true, and we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, tell me what has to happen, what will happen. All those things will be added to us. True or not? True or not? So what if they're not being all added to us? Either what he said is not right, or we're not doing what he told us to do. And see, here, that's where, that's right where I was. That's right where Phyllis and I were. I'm a preacher. I've been to Bible school. Right? And that's what he told me. He took me to that verse. And he said, Keith, son, you, like many of my people, so that made me feel a little bit better. <laughs> like many of my people, you know this verse, but you're not doing it. You're not doing it. Now see, I'm, we left home to follow his plan for our life. We went to Bible school. We'd made some sacrifices already. But yet, I'm, we're still not doing this. We hadn't made the shift in our heart and mind. We tithed, kind of. You know when we could. What are you laughing about? <laughs> we, uh, we gave as we could. Hmm? 
But you know, you got to take care of your stuff. <laughs> got to take care of your bills. We begin to give some and sow some in faith. And we had some miracles happen. We had some money come in. We'd never had any money before. So one of the first things we did is we got us a better place to stay and got us a new car. <laughs> nice one. And had big payments on it. <laughs> now don't laugh so innocently. <laughs> Your history is not blemish free. <laughs> and uh, so then we got, the, we got this, this, uh, this house payment and we got this car payment and we got the big insurance on the big, big car and, and we got this, we got the other. And then as month to month went by, we're going to meetings and, and there's things we'd like to get involved in and we don't have it. All of our money's spoken for <laughs> before we get it. <laughs> when is the time to put God first? After you've done all these personal things and, and made all these commitments and and in my case, in, in our case, sign the line for those easy 400 payments. <laughs> huh? When's the time to put God first? Before you make that commitment. Before you do that personal thing. And here's the thing that folks had not got so many. If your house needs carpet, and the church needs carpet. Help me out. What do we do? We wait on our carpet. Anybody here or not? We wait on our carpet. We help the church get its carpet. Then. Come on, somebody say then. 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 Then we get our carpet. And if we do it the right way, it won't be a struggle to get our carpet after we help the church get their carpet. The Lord will add our carpet to us. What if you need a new car? And a missionary needs a new car or a truck. Seek ye first the kingdom. If this man, this woman's on kingdom business, Come on, is that right? Fulfilling a kingdom directive and a kingdom mission and the Lord causes you to know about it and puts it in your heart to get involved and you got resources in your hand. Don't even stop by the car lot. Change the channel when the car commercial comes on that you like. Is that right? And console yourself with this thought. They make new ones every day. And the new ones are improved. And God don't care if I have five of these, but I got to put him first. I got to do his thing first. Then, then we work on mine. Now a lot of, folk, a lot of people have heard that. A lot of people know that in their head. But when it comes time to do it, when you get paid, we just got paid. Now what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's one of the first revelations the Lord gave us about uh, tithing. And uh, over the course, like I said, of the next five years, after I prayed that prayer, it seemed like the Lord was talking to me every day about this, something every day. Thank God he did. And uh, I saw, I've got to get this settled. Is the tithe his or mine? <laughs> huh? Is it his or mine? Man, there, there are, I started to say small wars, they're actually bigger than that, wars that are fought about who does the tithe belong to. Woo, you want to get you want to stir something up, just start talking about that. <laughs> who does the tithe 
Where does, where's the tithe go? Who gets the tithe? Who can get the tithe? Who's the tithe belong to? And the Lord took me back to the scriptures. And the scripture says, the tithe belongs to the Lord. The Lord. Are you the Lord? Okay. <laughs> Are you the Lord? Hmm? How many understand as preachers, heads of ministries, heads of churches, do I need to know, do, do preachers and heads of ministries, do we need to be really clear about what's ministry money and what's our money? Are you sure? Oh boy, you should see looks across the crowd. You better. <laughs> Do I need to be real clear? Yes. Huh? Yes. Let's say money has come in. There's plenty of money in the new church building fund. But I would like a new car. Huh? I like a new car. So hey, would it be okay to take some money out of the building fund? And buy a new car. No. Are you sure? Yes. I pay it back. No. <laughs> huh? No. Are you sure? sure? Are you sure that'd be wrong for me to do it? Yes. Yeah. Me too. Well, then is it okay for you to take tithe money no. and buy a car with it? No. What's the difference? No. <laughs> I said, what's the difference? No. Would it be okay to take tithe money, spend it on a nice meal out Saturday night and buy you some new clothes? And what's the difference in a believer taking tithe money if it's the Lord's and spending it on their stuff than a preacher taking designated money and spending it on their stuff? What is the difference? There is no difference. What you got to get settled is does the tithe belong to him? The tenth portion, is it his? People say, well, that's just in the law. Well, you're showing your ignorance of Scripture. It was before the law and during and after. No, no, no. Tithing, Abraham tithed. There was no law telling him to tithe. How did he find out how to tithe? He tithed by faith. And Melchizedek is a type of our great high priest who receives our tithes right now. Hebrews says, here men that die receive tithes and offerings, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. We got a great high priest passed into the heavens. When we bring our tithes and offerings by faith, he receives them and he blesses us. But you got to make up your mind. Because if you play with it, you'll still be struggling 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And we finally saw, I, I, I put my head in the Bible and I, and I stayed there for weeks and months on it about, and I got settled. And Phyllis and I got down in the floor, we repented, we said, Lord, the tithe is yours. It is yours. We would have nothing and no thing to tithe from if you hadn't blessed us, if you weren't our source. And it's not a matter of legalism. It's a matter of acknowledging who our source is, why we have anything to start with, and it is a way of honoring him. We honor him with our uh, first fruits, our substance, and the first fruits of all of our increase. And it is a way of allowing him access into my business. Oh, who wants God in your business? You want God in your business? Tithing gives him access into your business to, to bless you and to protect you. Boy, my wife Phyllis, uh, she's big on this one, man. Something comes up around the office, something they're, they're saying is going to break that, that shouldn't break, it's too new or, or something like that. She'll stomp her feet and go, the devourer is rebuked. We're tithers. The devourer is rebuked. And we've seen miracle after miracle. Things just straighten up and start working right. Well, you can't stomp your foot when you kind of sort of tithe. When you can. And so what we did 
This is how the Lord led us. We opened a separate account at our bank. And in our mind, this is the God account. And when we get paid, we started off with 11%. That's 10% is a tithe, 1% is an offering. We take it off the top first before we pay a bill. Come on, are you listening? Before we pay a bill, before we do anything for ourselves, we take that, we took that 11% right off the top, it goes into the God account. That's his. That's not ours. We don't spend it for anything personal. Any, that's his. That's, that goes to kingdom money. That's his things. Well, if you do that, every time you get paid and every time money comes in, it's going to accumulate. Amen. And then when something comes up and the Lord deals with you to give, you have something. When people keep saying, I'd give if I had something, well, why don't you have something? Amen. Just because you hadn't made that, that quality decision, you hadn't made that commitment. We do that with our church, we do that with the ministry, and every year we increase the percentage. Some parts of the ministry now is up to 25%, others are at 15%, others are at 33%. And you know what, if you keep doing that every time money comes in, something came up with us, oh, this was a year or so ago, and a missionary uh, was talking about a project, they need to buy some equipment and go to a country and do this, it's going to take two years, and the Lord dealt with me, uh, uh, take care of that. I thought, can we? Hmm. Call the office, there's more than enough in there, in the God account. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Why? Because we've been putting it in there every week, putting it in there every week. Come on, can you see this? Yeah. Oh, I'd do it if I had it. Well, why don't you have it? Why don't you have it? Not having made that quality decision, that absolute commitment, this is his, and I'm doing this first. Can you say amen? amen. Go with me, please, to Haggai. We'll take just a couple of minutes with this, and we'll close, and... You're going to be back for the rest of the convention, right? You, you're here for the duration, aren't you? There's a lot more to see about this. How many understand when you're talking about these things, you've got talking and you've got doing? Right? Talking doesn't cut it. Are you, am I, putting God's things first? And if not, that would explain a lot of things. Why the, all these necessities have not been added to us in the way that they should be, need to be. It's not something you do mechanically. It's a change that comes in your heart. And you have to put your stuff back seat to his stuff every day. And every time something comes up that you want or think you need, you examine what I want to do for the kingdom first. Amen. Come on, can you see this? Amen. I don't care if it's on sale. Amen. <laughs> I don't care if it's a great deal. Amen. Being led by a deal is not being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Huh? Being led by a low price is not being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And everybody's flesh is the same. Your flesh wants what, what it wants. I know I stopped at a, a car dealership one time some years ago and the salesman came out and he said, can I help you? And I said, uh, we're just looking. He said, that's how it starts. <laughs> that's how it starts. <laughs> what was Adam and Eve doing out there by the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil? What are they doing? Oh, they're not going to eat it. They're not going to do anything. They're just looking. <laughs> there are times and seasons in your life when you don't need to look. Because it's just going to stir you up and it's not time. And there's times and seasons in your life you don't need to go to the mall with your buddies. 
Oh boy, somebody didn't like that. <laughs> Why? Because it's, it's, it's easier, let's say you're trying to lose a couple of pounds. It's easier to pass by the grocery store than it is the ice cream aisle. Right? It's easier. It's easier. Make it easy on yourself. But it, come, it has to do with your heart. What's first in my heart? What do I love most? Right? We love the kingdom of God. We love the people of God. We love the mission of God. And like we are saying earlier, people are trying to live down here like we're going to do this for the next thousand years. And so because of that, they don't have time to get involved in the church because they got all these other things going on and they don't have, they, they can't give because they're using the money for all these other things and they don't realize in a few days you're going to be out of here. Your life is going to be over and all that stuff you're doing and spending your time and your money on, is it affecting the kingdom anyway? I'm not saying you can't have fun with something, but if it takes up too much of your life, you're wasting huge chunks of your life. Something that you'll never get any reward over. It won't make any difference. Man, if, I, if we all got a revelation of how soon we're going to be out of here <laughs> and how little a lot of the stuff we've done matters and how important and how great the reward for the kingdom of God things is, radical changes would happen in people's lives. Priorities would shift. Everybody said out loud, Lord, open my eyes. The eyes of my heart. The eyes of my mind. Help me to realize how brief my life is. How short my remaining time is. How insignificant so many natural things are. And how important and eternal glory and eternal reward your things are. Help me to see it. Help me to be aware of it. Help me discern it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Woo. We're making progress, saints. We're making progress. Haggai, are you, are you there? Haggai. During that time that I mentioned to you that I prayed that prayer, Phyllis and I were tired of being broke. The Lord led me to Haggai. Now, if you don't know where Haggai is, go to Matthew and start backing up. And it, and it won't take long. You'll be there. And just two chapters. Not big ones at that. You might know where, where we are. Haggai. Now I'm seeing this puzzle looks across the crowd. Haggai. <laughs> two chapters. And the Lord would prompt me, read that. So I'd go back and read it. Just two chapters don't take too long. Then a day or two had passed, he prompted me, go back and read that again. I go back and read it again. He prompted me, go back and read it again. This went on for months. I guess I read it, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 times. And of course, after several times, I thought, okay, something I'm not getting here, huh? <laughs> Lord, help me. Open my eyes. And glory to God, one day it hit me. And I wrote in big letters up by the title, Matthew 6, 33. So let's read some of it and you see what I'm talking about. The word of the Lord came, in verse 1 it says, and verse 2, here's what he said. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, The people say, the time is not come the time that the Lord's house should be built. <laughs> what did the people say? It's not time to build the Lord's house right now. Are they saying they're not going to build it? No. no. What are they saying? Not right now. Not right now. Somebody said out loud, not right now. Not right now. Have you ever heard that phrase? Yes. Not 
not now. And the Lord said, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you, O you, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? The Lord said, oh, it's not time for my house, but it must be time for your house. <laughs> your house is built out and furnished and got drapes and carpets and uh, bushes in the yard and sod and my house is not finished. And then the Lord says, now consider your ways, verse 5. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat but have not enough. Everybody say not enough. Not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. What is that? Not enough. You clothe you, but there's none warm. That's not enough. And he that earns wages, earns wages to put it in a bag with holes. Now don't raise your hand. But have you ever heard of anybody that felt like that was a situation? You, you get some money in, and then you look up and go, where did it go? It's like, is there a hole in my pocket? What? That's not the blessing. That means something's wrong. Verse 7, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. Build what house? His house. When? 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 When should they have built it? Before they worked on their house and they could have avoided that running short on everything and hole in your pocket experience. Y'all with me, saints? Go up the mountain, get the wood, bring it down, build the house, and I will take pleasure in it and I'll be glorified, says the Lord. Didn't he say, them that honor me? I will honor. You looked for much, and know it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow on it. Why? Because the Lord of hosts, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste, and you run every man to his own house. Therefore the heaven of you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. I call for a drought upon the land, upon the mountains, and the corn, and the new wine, and the oil, and upon all that the ground brings forth, and men, and cattle, and labor of the hands. All the labor of the hands. Lack, 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 lack. What was the problem? Many have learned faith principles. Many have learned sowing and reaping principles. But you can know both of these areas and still experience lack. If you don't do this in your heart, put God first. Not just in thought and talk and theory, but in action every day at your job, with your house, with your stuff, with your kids. You say, well, my kids come first. Then God is not. Then God is not. There's only number one slot. Only one number one slot. That's it. Somebody else is in there. God's not in there. Putting God first is the best thing you ever did for your kids. I saw it. I had just, we had just got a car. It was really something I wanted more than even Phyllis. She liked it too, but it was a sports car. And I saw it. I was laying in on the floor reading this. I want to do more for the Lord. Oh, I do. But I'm going to get this car right now. <laughs> huh? And, and you know, we, but we, we're going to do things for the Lord. When? Later. I saw it. I thought, Lord, I should have sought you and paid attention to what you were telling me in my heart before I committed to these things and, and I saw it. 
I saw what I needed to do. I need to get rid of that car. I'd had it three months. You're going to take a bath. You know what I mean by that? You're going to lose money, buddy. But there are more, more important things than money. So I took it to a place, and sure enough, I took a bad hit. But I got rid of that payment, and I got rid of that insurance. I had a pickup that wasn't very old. And I realized I'm not where we need to be. I sold the pickup, put the money on other stuff, sowed some seed. We'd been going out eating every other night. I thought, we're not there. Our, our giving, our kingdom emphasis compared to what we're spending on ourselves. Come on, are you all with me? I, I'm trying to act like I'm at a place I'm not at. So we bought some turkey and cheese. <laughs> Made some sandwiches. <laughs> and didn't go out every night. And well, now, Phyllis had a car we had believed God for and it was given to her. And now that's the only car we have. So I'm, I'm asking her, can I ride with her? <laughs> and we worked at two different places, so I'd have to wait till she could get off and come get me. And man, I'd had my own car since I was 13. We grew up in the country. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, and man, it was a challenge for me at times, but I got to work on my patience. I got to work on my patience. Just several good things came out of it. And, and, and is everybody awake now? I'm, I'm not saying I can't have this. What am I saying? My kingdom, our, our giving and our priorities are not right. I can have three of these later on if I want to. But I got to get this first. I got to get this right. So we tightened our belts and we, we paid things off and we increased our monthly sowing to ministries that we were involved in and we didn't kind of sort of tithe. We tithed. Yes, Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, immediately things begin to change. Glory to God. Within that same year, somebody called us and told a $6,000 debt. They said, forget about that debt. That debt is gone. You don't owe us that anymore. And then we owed $12,000 in back taxes. And the guy called me, I was out in another city, he called me to one side, he said, do you owe money on your taxes? I hadn't said anything to him about this. I said, why? He said, uh, there's a reason. I said, yeah. He said, how much? I said, do you need to know? He said, yeah, if you don't mind. I told him. He didn't blink an eye. He said, I'm going to send you $1,000 every month until that is paid. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And within a year's time, we're out of debt. The taxes are paid. We're caught up. Come on, can you see this? We're caught up. And we're beginning to experience even some surplusage, some extra. Oh, come on, can you see this, guys? I knew faith principles. I knew about sowing and reaping. I knew about tithing. What did the Lord say to me? You, like many of my people, you know this verse, but you're not doing it. You're not, it's not practicing. You're not practicing it in your life. Look at the last chapter here. In closing, I, I'm sure now. <laughs> 2.15. He said, now I pray you, Consider from this day and upward. What did they do? Let's make sure we're all on the same page. He said the people were saying it's not time to build the Lord's house. What did the Lord say to them? Is it time to build your house? He said, consider, consider what your life is like. Look at, your, look at your ways. Look at your situation. You're short on everything. You feel like you, your, bag, your money bag's got a hole in it. He said, Go. Get the materials. Build my house. I'll be glorified. And if you read the rest of the chapter, they did it. They responded. They immediately started working on the Lord's house. And in verse 15, 
He said, now I pray you consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days were when one came to a heap of 20 measures, there was just 10. When you came to the press fat to draw out 50 out of the press, there were but 20. You should have got 50 and you only got 20. Shortage, lack. I smote you with blasting, mildew, hail, all the labors of your hands, and yet you turn not to me, says the Lord. You know, when we're experiencing lack, 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 we should run to the Lord and say, what's wrong? This is not normal for me. This is not, this is not right for a child of God. Verse 18, consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, Mark your calendar. From the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, the day you started building my house, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? And yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, the olive tree has not brought forth. It's too early to see what the crops will bring forth. But I want you to know, from this day will I bless you. Was there a spiritual breakthrough? Was there a turnaround in their whole life? When did it happen? He said, it's too early for you to see yet what the crops are going to produce. But I'm telling you from the very day you laid the foundation on my house and you started putting my house ahead of yours, from that day, from this day, I'm going to bless you. 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 You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What did Jesus, the master, read letters in the book say? All these things shall be added to you. How many think as surely as you put him first, seek him first, that's going to happen? If that's not happening, don't argue with us. You ain't doing it. Can't be any other way. Because his word is true. What he said is right. If he said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Amen. Glory to God. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Lift up your praise. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. 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 Close your eyes. If you haven't done this and something's happened in your heart this morning, you can do it right now. You can make that commitment inside you, not playing around, not playing around. You are going to put him first ahead of yourself, ahead of your kids, ahead of your job, ahead of everything. He is number one. If that's your heart, pray this out loud with me. If not, then don't say something you don't mean, but say it out loud if it's in your heart. Father God, Father God I, purpose I purpose from this day forward, from this day forward to not just say I believe it, not just say I believe it but to live it, to live practice it, it practice putting you first, putting you first seeking, first seeking first your kingdom, your, kingdom, your, business, your business, building your house, in Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, and I confess, and I, confess. I, will blessed. I will be blessed according to your word. To your word. I, will I will not lack. All these things, All these things shall, be shall be added unto me. Unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank him for it. Lift up your hand. Thank him for it. Hallelujah. Praise be to God.